Welcome to Medical Consultants Network's Healthcare Compliance Video Series. The video you are about to see is entitled Fire Life Safety Staff Education and Training. The purpose of this video is to educate your healthcare organization about regulatory body requirements for staff regarding the JCAHO life safety standards. The life safety standards are also commonly known as the fire safety standards as they address staff responsibilities in the healthcare environment related to fire management. By viewing this video and discussing the information contained in the workbook provided, your staff will understand basic fire safety information, regulatory body requirements for individual staff regarding their responsibilities for fire safety, which areas or departments hold additional responsibilities for fire safety compliance, key fire safety prevention practices expected throughout the healthcare community, JCAHO and other regulatory body organizational requirements for fire safety, and how best to demonstrate compliance in this area and what types of information will be requested and examined during your next JCAHO accreditation survey related to fire safety. Under the life safety, commonly referred to as fire safety standards, the JCAHO outlines specific staff responsibilities. Your organization is required to provide education and training of staff that addresses what individual staff members must do to prevent fires as well as the staff members roles and responsibilities in the event of a fire. This educational session is presented by Dr. Stephen Chin, a physician and veteran surveyor and consultant with extensive experience in healthcare accreditation, certification and regulatory compliance. Part of this program is to really give you a snapshot overview of some of the safety features that you're required to be aware of. Your organization has a commitment to you to making sure that you understand these features so that in the event something um, should happen in your workplace environment, you would at least know what to do and how to respond. In the life safety section, there are a number of things that you should be aware of. In fire safety, uh, as you well know, there are three components necessary for a fire to occur. Those components include a fuel source, oxygen, and ignition source or fire source. If you eliminate any one of those three, you will not allow a fire to occur. Therefore, you know, some of the things you need to be familiar with it, with this organization are where are the fire extinguishers located? Where are the fire exits? What is your responsibility in the event that a fire should occur or if you had a drill uh, in your work area? And basically, what your primary responsibility will be in the event that you know, the situation should occur. A number of facilities uh, subscribe to different acronyms. Uh, but basically, your primary responsibility is making sure that patients are safe and removed from a particular area that a proper alarm system is activated, whether it means a pulse station or a phone call or just yelling down the hallway. The next step is to contain that area, if that means closing a door or removing the uh, fire to another area, whatever it takes to basically contain the fire to a particular area. And then finally, the issue of extinguishing a fire. Now, one of the things that's really important about extinguish fire is that check with your manager and supervisors to make sure what your responsibility would be in this situation. In some areas, the expectation is that the uh, staff would grab the fire extinguisher and go through that process of using it to put out a fire. Uh, in some locations, uh, the preference is to have individuals who are specially trained or designated to be involved with using the fire extinguisher. Please check with your manager or supervisors to find out what their expectations are. While most healthcare organizations make available fire extinguishers that can be used on different types of fires, called multi-class rating fire extinguishers, staff should be aware of which type of fire extinguisher is available in their department and what type of fire the extinguisher can be used on. The following are classifications of fire extinguishers commonly found in healthcare organizations. 
Class A extinguishers. This class of extinguisher is to be used for fires from ordinary combustibles, such as wood or paper. Class B extinguishers. This class of extinguisher is used to extinguish fires from flammable liquids, such as gasoline. Class C extinguishers. This class of extinguisher is used to extinguish electrical fires. Class K extinguishers. This class of extinguisher is used in commercial kitchen areas to extinguish grease and oil fires. Most fire extinguishers in general areas of health care facilities have multi-class ratings. That is, they are classified to extinguish fires belonging to the categories of A, B, and C. However, staff members are responsible to know which type of fire extinguishers are available for use in their area of responsibility. Staff must also know how to correctly utilize a fire extinguisher. To correctly use a fire extinguisher, follow the PASS system. P. Pull the safety pin from the top of the fire extinguisher, making sure the pin is completely removed to allow the handle to depress and release the contents of the extinguisher. A. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. S. Squeeze the handle from a distance of approximately 8 feet from the fire. And remember, if you release the handle, the discharge from the extinguisher will stop. And finally, S. Sweep the nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire until the fire is extinguished, or until help arrives. Watch an extinguished fire carefully, as fires may reignite. Remember the PASS acronym. Pull pin, aim nozzle, squeeze handle, and sweep at the base of the fire. The JCAHO requires healthcare organizations to conduct fire drills. Another component of uh, this organization is the requirements to have fire drills. And I would encourage you to speak to your manager or supervisors to find out what kind of signals uh, are activated in your particular organization so that you are aware of a fire drill situation or a real fire situation. Many organizations subscribe to an acronym or a phrase to educate staff on what their expectations are in the event of a fire drill or a fire situation. An acronym such as RACE, uh, R-A-C-E, uh, R standing for rescue, A standing for alarm, C standing for containment, and E standing for extinguish or in many cases exiting. Uh, are very valid ways of approaching uh, staff education and training to familiarize them what to do in the event of a fire drill or a fire situation. The following are fire drill requirements. Fire drills must be held quarterly with a minimum of one fire drill per shift per quarter. All personnel of all shifts in all areas of every building where patients are housed or treated shall participate in drills to the extent called for in the facility fire plan. At least 50% of the drills are to be unannounced. Each drill is to be critiqued for the purpose of identifying deficiencies and opportunities for improvement. All personnel are to be trained in fire response according to the facility fire plan. The effectiveness of this training is to be evaluated at least annually. The training should include general facility protocols and all aspects of response that may be unique to the individual's duties and work site. Fire drills are to test staff knowledge and therefore staff must demonstrate knowledge of use and functioning of fire alarm systems where such alarms are available, transmission of alarms where such alarms are available, containment of smoke and fire, transfer to areas of refuge, fire extinguishment, specific fire response duties, and preparation for building evacuation. This means that staff must know where fire alarms are located and how to 